Thank you for joining us on Meet the Candidates. I have a familiar face to the City of Champions. I have Ann Beauregard, who is currently the Ward 5 City Councilor, and she does her own show here at BCA, and she is seeking to be a Councilor at Large. Ann, welcome to BCA. Thank you. All Thanks right. for coming on. Um, you're going citywide. You, yeah. you were pretty clear when you first ran yeah. that you said you were only going to serve for two terms and then you were going to do something else. And the yeah. something else is running for council well, at large. I, I mean, this was unexpected to run at large, but since one of my colleagues stepped down to run for mayor, you know, JB, Jean Bailey Davenport, I always called him JB, then I said, okay, I'm going to run this and uh, finish what I started. Okay, because there are plenty of things to talk about, about finishing what I started. So one of the things that really want to discuss here, and people have been bringing it up, left to right. I mean, I want to make it clear now, I'm in Borgard, I'm War 5 City Councilor, I'm running at large. I won't run again after this if I win. Why? Because it's about opening it up. People have brought up the whole term limit situation. Now, I don't know if you need to create a term limit or what, but we have people from all over the universe in this city with all kinds of skills, education, and talent. And we to pro progress, you need to be inclusive. And that's, that's what we're looking at. And progress means what? Oh, I know, economic development. I, don't, I know for a fact that there isn't one person that's saying that we have too much business in Brockton that's good for the community. No one's saying that, and that's what we need. So I've been involved with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce for over 20 years as a volunteer or representing uh, an, you know, an agency that I was involved with or where I was employed. And that's important because they're trying to get business into Brockton. All right, right now I represent the east side. And everybody wants another restaurant or something downtown. They want something, I'm going to call it diner-ish, friendly, you know, situation. And I believe that, of course, I said that was one of the things. I'm bouncing around here a lot that I made a commitment to get rid of B21 as it stands, because it was doing nothing for economic development. And hence, this is why we have all these empty storefronts. No one is saying, I'm glad we have empty storefronts. It's not bringing businesses that own the you know, structures, it's not bringing tax revenue, and it's not bringing people what they want in the community. And I mean, in the East Side, for example, we'd love to have a friendlies type of restaurant, diner style. All I can think of some days, somebody was talking the other day about Mel's Diner. <laughs> yeah. It's stuck in my head. But anyway, in all seriousness, the, the old fashioned meals, you know, that everyone still wants, or just new things, and that quaintness of a diner type of atmosphere. So, Anyway, having said that, it's not that we don't have restaurants, but there, that some type of you know mentality is sort of that. Okay, we're going for coffee and dessert, or we're going, you know, that type of situation. Let me ask yeah. you on economic development yes. specifically. Okay, being the Ward Five Council, and I know we're going for seven wards. The Christos property, the Massasoit Conference sure. Center. And like you mentioned, a lot of the different empty storefronts, okay? So being involved for 20 years, and I know you've been there, I've been there too, yes. um, at the chamber, what do you think we could do? What are we doing wrong, or what could we do better? Okay, what were we doing wrong was not inviting people. Not, you know, the, the assumption is everybody lives in this little square. Why didn't we ask someone in Iowa if they wanted to come here? Why didn't we ask someone in Florida if we wanted to come here? Here's a success that happened in, I'm biased, I love Mexican food, but that new terrific restaurant on Oak Street, they came from New York. Mm -hmm. We want more people from all these other places with their great towns and their great foods. And I want to commend the people that are coming at the Old Friendlies right near Broughton High. Thank you. We're grateful that you're coming with your Caribbean uh, cuisine. And apparently they've been very successful down south. And come on up. And look at, we heard the news that Denny's that was supposed to be isn't coming. Now, again, we want all kinds of establishments. I'm an, an ethnic food person, so I want all kinds of things. But enough on the restaurants because we could go on all day about great restaurants in Broughton and how we want more of them. What we want is economic development. And economic development means many things, light manufacturing. We thank Evans Machine that's in Ward 5. I am going to talk a little bit about Ward 5 naturally after four years. And we're, we're thankful for Knight and, Co and Company that makes the vests that protect our soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq and wherever they might land. 
We're grateful for that. We want more companies to feel they can come to this city and be able to do that. Okay, you wanted to talk about Massasoit region. Yep. Okay, again, devastated that our former wonderful governor, you know, had come up with this great idea, and I wanted to see that come forward. Now that that is presently not attainable, what I want to see is the people of the community invited to talk about what they want to see. After all, it's theirs, right. directly or indirectly. And we don't know. There's a young man I met on campaign that wants to do some kind of, and I don't completely understand, technology distribution situation, um, what do you call that, through the mail, and similar to something like eBay or what have you. Again, I don't pretend to completely understand that. But what, what if he could set up? I mean, we've got to be understanding of ideas that many people have, and we have such talent here. So yes, the first and foremost thing, and I have spoken to the senator about that, and he wants to do a community meeting to talk about the Massasoit situation. We want everybody involved, the elected officials, the senior citizens, etc. What do I think would be ideal? A combination of everything. We have a tremendous hospital, it's over 100 years old, that's just reopened, we'll call it, because a new and upgraded present day nursing school and they're leveling the one behind it at some point that was over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. We need more medical treatment pl facility places. Um, I'm thinking physical therapy. I'm thinking along with the educational aspects that we have through Massasoit Community College and the continuing education contracts with Stonehill, UMass, Bridgewater State University, I'm forgetting one, um, Curry College. Okay, for example, so that. And we want the seniors to be able to feel totally safe and comfortable going all around there and have the services they need as, as this um, cont we continue to see an aging population. So that's what we want to see there. A whole lot of everything, but it needs to come from the people that live in this city and those people particularly in those neighborhoods that's affecting, yes. So you're, besides doing your job as the city councilor right now, yeah. you're out talking to people like you yes. always are. So what are you hearing from the people? And I, by the way, a community meeting to actually ask people what they want, that's really important. Well, I that, think important, always, so. always, always, and, it, and it, it brings, again, so many things to light. Um, I've had the uh, situation with the um, CSX. I mean, that's a 20-year proposal. But again, that was taped the other night. Thank you, Michael. And um, But that's just the beginning, and that can be downloaded. I mean, that's a, a long ways from, from transpiring. M Massasoit area, that, that conference center, that to me is vital. And the other area that's vital, though it's not in my ward, and everywhere that you walk, people are saying it, is where my wonderful Kmart is that's closing. <laughs> in all seriousness, we need to whole revamp that. And how do we get that? They started having a couple of community meetings a couple of years ago, but they need a whole lot more, and they need to make it when people come. And I'm a strong proponent, even though I don't pretend to be Miss Techno Wiz, that we can do this through computers, through college students, and what have you. And to cite our downtown that everyone keeps on talking about the revitalization of, at the, the most recent Downtown Brockton Association meeting, we had a couple of students from Northeastern University's program with urban development, and um, they're looking at the Legion Parkway situation and trying to do so something like that. Again, we want your input all the time because this is yours. And, that, and that's vital, that's absolutely vital. Good, bad, and in between. Um, it's no secret, you know, I know you want to ask about affordable housing, et cetera. Do we I want to ask you about Mainspring. Mainspring. And what we should do with that because it affects us right here at this building dramatically, yeah. yes. okay? Um, there's been talk, put it at CSX, put it on the south side. What would you do, Anne, uh, well, with, with Well, first of all, I would again talk to the people in the community. We had a fabulous meeting with several of the business and nonprofits back in July. Believe it or not, we got over 40 people on a, a you know, beautiful set, um, Wednesday night in July, you know, stu in the middle of the summer, talking about this. That's, that's what happens. I appreciate that our, our acting temporary interim mayor uh, had that terrific meeting, and we need more of those. I'm grateful that more people are on the task force and they're inviting more people to come to talk about it. To me, I believe that it should be a campus type of dynamic. 
and it shouldn't be near uh, close to a lot of residents or close to a lot of businesses to me because I believe that all of, they should have um, a whole campus situation similar to these people that go out to college in the middle of nowhere and I'll cite Amherst, Massachusetts. It's gigantic there. Granted, we could have anything that large, but with all they the have, different services, right, with the medical, services. food, yeah. um, education training, job training, uh, et cetera, all in one entity. Again, I stress the term campus because that to me would, would make the most sense. Again, I, Where's the money coming from? Where's, you know, there are a whole lot of things you've got to, we need to ask here. But here's another idea too. Again, as I always say, we need the community, we need the government, we need the business, and we need our institutions of higher learning. And we're terribly excited that several of them have participated in many things in the past, and that's what we want to see happen. I know I'm talking fast because there's a whole lot to talk about here. Right. Okay, you're talking about the mainspring. Yes, something has to be done because uh, there are several people that, how would I say, are less than, their behavior is less than desirable, and that is a detriment to the businesses, to the um, em uh, individuals that employ people downtown, whether it's brought to Neighborhood Health Center or whatever, and we, we don't want that. We want people to feel safe, and that's everybody, the homeless, and the, um, those seeking services, those working, those you know coming down and being educated. I'm very excited that we're finally gonna see the transition of the Ganley Building, and uh, fingers crossed it all transpires, and uh, as it should, and very excited that Massasoit is coming downtown. And we're always welcoming, and there's talk that BSU, Bridgewater State University, will join them. This is exactly what we want to see. Absolutely. And that, and that again, then you have the young people, then you have people my age, then you have older people all together working on a whole variety of different things, and that's, that makes community, yep. Let's talk about intergenerational. We talked about seniors, we started talking about kids. In Randolph, they have an intergenerational community center where the seniors and the kids and there's gym facilities and everything over there. I went to a meeting over there recently nice. and I was amazed. And you got the conference center sitting there. You got the, the Shaw Center pretty much sitting there. The city took it over. That has to do with B21 like you talked about. Yes. How do we make sure we have facilities for everybody? Especially, you know, people have talked about teen centers for years. We have the Boys and Girls Club well, we and have we have the couple, Y. We have a couple of things. And when people, you know, remember, we're way bigger than Randolph. Right. And Randolph has a lot of business for a, sm a smaller community. So they get a little more revenue than we do. But now having said that, yeah, we already have intergenerational trend activity going on. We have students coming to the Council on Aging and interacting in, in several areas, and I'm all for that. I believe that we can see in the future we have to, how would I say, validate every, everyone's concerns here. We want to find out everything that, that's transpired with B21 so that we can close the door, learn from that experience, get everyone's you know frustrations out, because they're justifiable, and believe me, I have plenty, and then turn around and say, okay, what can we do with these various buildings? Where can we get this funding source? How can we maintain that? And who do we ask? The seniors, because they would be the ones that would be first relocated. And then second of all, the, the idea of the students interacting with them is just brilliant. And that's, that's great for them. And that's great for the seniors because we all know that the more seniors interact, the more socialized they are, the better off they are emotionally and physically. And, and that's exactly what we want to see. That seniors deserve the best of everything and in their years. They've committed to the community for decades. Now it's their turn to be treated well. So on education, right now it's a, it's, it's a hot topic on yes. the state level and it's a hot topic on the city level because of the, sh the shortfall that was just pointed out. What are your thoughts on that and also the different branches of government working together, the mayor's office, the school committee, and the city council? Well, first of all, you know, everyone wants everyone to work together and we're going to, to you know, a certain point, everyone, you know, has, they represent a, a, a area of the community or, you know, at lodges, they represent represent the whole thing. Well, I've spoken to the CFO and he's very open and, and positive with speaking with people and that, that is, we're very grateful for that. 
and I, I want that to go on record. And I did speak to him about that, and he explained that they believe they can find most of the funding from a completely different source, which will be explained to you because we'd have to be on the tape for a little while here right. to go through all the steps. He believes in transparency, we believe in transparency, and we believe you have the right to know. And I want to be fighting with the school committee because I'm very lucky in my, my community, we have a very dedicated community school person and you know, for Ward 5, um, Judy Sullivan. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because not only was she, is she dedicated as the representative on school committee, but she was dedicated for years, whether it was for the PTA or the PTO or volunteering with community schools, et cetera. So that, we're, we're working together. I mean, we're going to have our moments where people see one thing one way and another, and we get to little, you know, situations. But no, that, that I don't want people to go to bed at night thinking that we're all mad at each other. And I, we, again, we are very grateful that, how would I say, under the circumstances we hope no one ever has to face, that, um, you know, Moses has, you know, rolled up his sleeves and, you know, done a great deal. Um, you know, he's one person, but he's working with a whole lot of people. And what's terrific is he has a really great open door policy. But anyway, having said that, that's what I always want to keep um, about. And so education, we're very lucky. We have dedicated state center and state legislators that are doing plenty for that. And just remember, too, it wouldn't hurt for the federal government to send some money our way, too. Because when I think of education, the first thing you think of is classrooms and the kids, you know, and the teachers. But and you want sports, you want after school, and the buildings they're in have to hold up and stand up. And that's, that's where you want to see the money spent, too. But if you have a choice, you say, okay, classroom, you know, kids and students first, then, and that's where I'm a little tired of us having to make those decisions when all of this should be all taking place all at the same time. So that's well, what they're going to fight. Back in 99, there was an opportunity to do a debt exclusion and fix the schools at 90 cents on the dollar. Yes. Didn't get put on the ballot because everybody said it wouldn't happen. And it's it, understandable. It yeah. just happened in a neighbor, two neighboring towns. Sure, yes. So it, a, but the... No. There are more means. Um, public safety. No, no, no. I think that's a little bit different. The, everything's so much smaller there. Everyone says there are more means. We have plenty of educated professionals making but good money. But an $80 million dollar school, school for an elementary, the cost of it's public works off, projects yes, is it, off it, the charts. Yes, but everyone needs to realize there's many components to add to that. So what we need to turn around and do is, okay, things change as they evolve. And I always I think of, you know, cars. Boy, if they change. And there was no such thing as an airbag. Now it's mandatory for a company to have an airbag. It should be mandatory at the federal level to begin to put in more funding for education. And next year, we're all going to try to see that that happens and, you know, whenever what we do and where we vote. So that, that we're going to realize. So, I mean, in debt exclusion, I don't want to penalize our seniors that are aging in place. And I don't want to penalize the young families when, in fact, we're taking a whole, on a whole lot. And we can't compare ourselves to a little tiny community that could fit in one of our wards. So that's the other thing. I see you have public safety Public safety, safety there. because I'm sure that's the bit, one of the biggest topics when you go around. People want to feel safe. And people want to feel safe. What I stress with that is, okay, we always need the right people. We always need the right equipment. And we certainly want more money to get more, you know, police and fire. And let's remember, too, as we age, uh, we want more fire, you know, to be able to come out there with the ambulance and, you know, save lives. Now, having said that, well, and I, I'm all for them getting upgrades with their, how would I say, structures. They need them. They deserve them. I don't believe it all has to come out of the taxpayer's pocket once again. Whoops. Once again, we need the money coming in from different areas. Now, having said that, public safety means communication. Because the more people talk, the more they communicate. It's no secret that I've been going out with a communications person <laughs> for the police, Darren Duarte, and we go around, we make a list of the you know, people who have contacted us with concerns, and we go around and talk to them. Right then and there, that gives people a great deal of confidence, and that, you know, we get the ball rolling. And so many of these situations are solution-driven. Nothing's perfect, but that's the best way to work things out, and I believe that everyone believes in that. Community policing, and that means every aspect of it. Uh, people need to be respected when they call the police and say, I'm upset that somebody's playing their, you know, band at 3 in the morning, you know, Okay, or having a you know wild party and they blocked you know all the the driveways. People need that respected. They deserve it, and we we need to to revamp some things. Is it perfect? Do I? Am I going to pretend to say I could run the police department better? No, but again, the the 
people's concerns need to be validated. And apparently we were told that we're running out of time. we get about five. I okay. wanted to talk to you about communication because you were one of the first counselors to do a TV show. It's Ward 5 and 10. Yes. You're going to have to change the name to it if you're Well, well, well we'll okay. say. Okay. But you, you just said public safety means communication. So how important is communication? You already talked about involving the people in yes. community meetings. But getting the word out and allowing people to talk. Talk about that. Well, okay, first of all, let's talk about communication. I have my Ward 5 and 10 because I want people to know what's going on. And it's simple, you know, to a fun thing going on at the library, the holiday parade, the Veterans Day parade, which is a week from Monday, to uh, the, um, any kind of construction, any kind of uh, conservation meeting, uh, you know, zoning board of appeals meeting, to, you know, opportunities for positions on all of these various boards, and I haven't named a fraction of them. Those, that's vital because you want the transparency. Communication is everything. So when you have the bulletin board that you put on, and we invite people to put their you know uh, events and what have you on, I believe that there should be a little program, a little you know program with um, you know the community police officer or going around, invite anyone that would feel comfortable doing that, and in the various languages, and particularly with the seniors because a lot of them are home would homebound you know for you know for various reasons and especially in the winter months and now I think I know it would be very important because I'm very concerned once it gets colder that some of these people are how would I say don't um, you know want to be a burden on the community but at the same time they have a right to you know have their concerns met and also a communicating way that people can call and say unfortunately I'm seeing a drug deal can someone come down and see this? Cameras are communication. Email is communication. BCA is communication. Uh, the, um, you know, certain Facebook, um, how would I say, it? Uh, you know, uh, sites are really advantageous. Uh, flyers. And definitely community meetings. I loved it because last month, and of course, you know, I put a lot in the newspaper. That, uh, the Enterprise, our local paper, is that they showed coffee with the police officer. I think little things like that should go on more. I love it when they go out, uh, what's it, Nancy Leesburg, when she goes to the schools and talks to them. To get that whole thing and people to understand that they're working for you, uh, and there's always going to be, you know, challenges. But that, that's the way to feel safe, is this constant talking and constant connecting. And I remember a wicked long time ago, there was this huge snowstorm called the Blizzard of 78. And amazingly enough, regardless of the fact that there was snow above everybody's head, and then some, people managed to communicate. And there was no Facebook, and there was very little, um, you know, right. cable access. And there was the radio, which we we're not against the radio one bit. There was the newspaper. There was no email, whatever. And people still talked. So that all compiled is vital. They actually yeah. did talk, Ann. You're right. Yeah. So I'm just trying to check a time cue real quick yeah. and make sure you have the last word and I just get to say Imagine goodbye. that, everybody. So, <laughs> so what do we have left, Mike? Six minutes. Six minutes. Okay. Oh, we have lots of time. Yeah, so, lots of time. So what issues haven't we touched okay, upon? Okay, we, we haven't we haven't talked about infrastructure. Let's talk about this because we've got everybody talking about building. And again, I want to clear it up. We want to have communication with business developers, etc. And we realize periodically we're going to have to negotiate with them because they're investing their finances and what have you in the community. And what I, I say to them, too, is, look, and we're looking out for our seniors. And I'm 61, by the way, so I'm <laughs> But in all seriousness, we're looking out for our community. Let's talk about this infrastructure. We're not beating up the DPW. I'm going to clear that up right now. OK, it's not their fault that we have pipes, water pipes that are 100 years old. I mean, people in those days used you know, water in a, a different way than we do today. We have three hospitals. We have the fourth largest school system. We need a lot of water. So we need the water flowing through. So yes, I've been adamant about infrastructure. And the number one request, and justifiably so, is to get their streets paved. In a lot of instances, it can be just to pave. They don't listen to me, just to pave. But in other instances, they need to go down and take care of those pipes and those sewer lines. So we're very grateful to see the funding that's coming in. It's, the, it's, getting, it's starting to trickle in. But again, go to bed at night knowing one thing. I have chased down the U.S. Senator, 
I have chased down the congressmen, and I have chased down the legislators. We need more funding for that. This is emergency. This is reality. People need to get to work. People need to get down their streets and not damage their cars fatally. Kids need to be able to walk on the, you know, on the sidewalks or the streets if there aren't any sidewalks. A lot of these smaller streets, there's no room, and and not have to fall or hurt, break, you know, the you know the, the leg or what have you. So yes, I've been adamant about that. I propose something about accepting all the streets because it, the more streets that we had that were considered, put that in quotes, public ways, the more funding we receive. What we did find out, because see, education is always vital, is conveniently, it's not one for one, not convenient for us, convenient for uh, the decision of Chapter 70 money, which is roads and repairs, yes. Mm -hmm. So now having said that, we're getting the ball rolling again. The planning board proposed having a committee, a task force, made up of government and, and planning board and um, engineer and law department and residents to talk about how we're going to get this issue resolved. Because this is something that how was it? you inherited. And it's not something you deserve. And we need to do something about it. And that, that's primarily the biggest, the biggest two reasons that I was running was for the infrastructure and for the economic development. And as I say, please vote for me on uh, Tuesday, November 5th, uh, ballot uh, number three now, number three, yes, <laughs> and B. But uh, in all seriousness, um, I feel like I'm, I'm the voice. I'm trying very hard. And the biggest thing, if I do nothing else, is empower, transparency, and in, in, encourage um, others to you know, participate in their community and, and feel safe as they should. And this is for everyone. So thank you. And Just contact name, information. People, everyone knows how to get you, but say it again. So oh, sure. The ones that Beauregard, don't. And it's ambeauregard at outlook.com and 774-297-4939 five eight four six nine one nine we're trying to help everyone and I want to clear that up because I'm not alone um, you know and um, I'm trying my best and we're trying all kinds of things and let me tell you if you get defeated the first time you get right back up there and you you learn from it and you, you, you move on and uh, so please vote for me and be number three <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Thanks. Thanks for coming all right. on and all, right. all the work that you do. Thank you. You're watching Meet the Candidates. Uh, BCA's mission is to educate the voters about the choices that they have in the election. But most of all, do your civic duty. Go out and vote. Don't sit on the sidelines and complain. It's the most important thing that you can possibly do. Thanks for joining us.